Hey guys, um, just want to show you how uh, do I use Dynatrace to start my day, um, to how to use Dynatrace to find out some um, problems with our APIs. Um, so basically, first thing I do is go to dashboards and open performance. Um, and I go to this a my CRM API response time. P99, which is the 99th percentile, um, and probably views the last six hours of what's happening. So from, by looking at this chart, we can see there's no major spikes. There are, you know, one or two minor spikes, um, happening here, but they're not major. They're not too different from the rest of the request. So that's okay. So in terms of major spikes, if you change to last seven days, you'll see, you'll see that this kind of spike comes as major spike. Uh, and as you expect, this spike actually happens at deployment time. So basically, when, whenever Arneo is released into production, we'll see those spikes happening uh, at that time. So we want to avoid analyzing those uh, major spikes because there will be a lot of noises and a lot of requests uh, are slow, um, but for a good reason. So we don't really need to care about them. So we want to make sure we investigate a time period there is um, no major spikes. So this is the last six hours, which is, you know, from, um, nine to three, uh, New Zealand time where I'm currently in. So that's probably our peak, um, usage time as well. So let's, let's do that. Then the next thing I go to is transaction services. And you, you'll see I have starting to breaking down, uh, all the third party services I use, but the main, main one we want to investigate is, of course, our API service. And you can go to dynamic web request. So open that. Um, and then, um, sort of, I normally tend to investigate straight away into pure pass, but because pure pass shows you the exact request happening at that time. So if you look at view pure pass and, uh, select again last six hours. And we sort of want, want to avoid, uh, this filter. Uh, I just use this filter to come to this page, but, uh, we want to track all requests. Dynamic web request is probably 99.9% .9 of the request. Uh, but just to get, get the whole feature, we filter in out all the requests. Be aware that, uh, it says showing the 1000 most recent pure pass requests. So, uh, even when we selected a big time period, you know, the, the time, for the last a thousand requests, it's probably only the last half a minute because we have thousands of requests happening every minute, right? To analyze this um, more, um, you know, to, to filter it more, we use sort of uh, start with 10 seconds um, to filter more requests. So 200 uh, requests longer than 10 seconds is probably still uh, quite a bit more than what we expect. So I'll probably filter it more. Um, to response time, you know, greater than 30 seconds to start with. 26 requests. That's something that we can manage that we can, you know, start to investigate. Um, but, you know, having, having a look at that, uh, all of them are in similar time period. So during this time period, uh, 1007, I believe there is a spike in API. So even health check and, um, you know, even health check is, which is supposed to be instant is taking a, a minute to complete. So we're actually seeing those noises again, you know, those very quick requests sh supposed to be very quick, right? So, uh, when they are not quick means they are, they are noises. So we want to avoid the time period of basically, um, from 10, um, around 10 or five to 10, 10, 10 past 10 or, you know, the 12, uh, 15 time period. Uh, this one is probably valid to be slow, but all the other stuff is probably noises. So let's, let's filter them out, uh, again. So let's maybe check only the last two hours to start with. So now we only have one request for response time over 30 seconds. So we can actually click into it and view response time hotspot. Huh, this is again, um, something really weird. 
service execution uh, normally means uh, there's nothing we can do about it. Service execution means um, like waiting time um, for the the API request. So uh, CPU is used by some other request. So this request is just wait there uh, to be executed. So we can't really find any useful uh, message for this. So at this point, you know, there's no point uh, analyzing this request. If we see, you know, interaction with other services or queues or high database usage, this is the time that we know that we can investigate and find out issues. But if all the time spent is service execution, then we know we hit a dead end. So ignore this request and continue on other stuff. Let's filter it down by maybe everything over 10 seconds for the past two hours. Let's see what's, what's going on. Huh, okay, so I believe we did hit another um, Sorry, another uh, sort of spike um, because again, I see those options requests are going really slow. So 2.15 is probably another spike. Uh, we don't know what has caused this spike, but during that second 2.15.23, there are a lot of requests going slow, 10 seconds, similar response time. And you know, those options requests are supposed to be in millisecond, they return like in 10 seconds. So that's again another spike. We want to avoid this analyzing this, this time period. Otherwise, uh, again, we will be stuck in there and find nothing. Um, so, okay, let's uh, let's try to filter out that. Let's uh, analyze everything happening after two fifteen. That's probably let's you know <laughs> reduce time period again to last thirty minutes. Let's see how that goes. Okay, uh, we have seen some interesting requests here now. Um, Profiler report, what's going on here? Again, service execution, so means waiting time. Um, probably nothing we can do. Next gen back channel message, taking 22 seconds. Okay, this is something really weird going on now. Interaction with services and queues is taking a huge amount of time, 22.6 seconds. Uh, it's calling request to public networks. And fun.io, just for your knowledge, is actually our Alexis search service. Uh, I'm not sure why this service is actually calling um, other um, services. Let, let's check, what are they? So interflow.com.au. Again, I have no idea what that is, but the person um, you know, writing this endpoint probably has no more knowledge of that. So we can sort of click into it and say, you know, this interflow, uh, decision gateway or ASMX, this integration that we have with this uh, external network is taking really long to complete. It takes 17.7 uh, .7 seconds to complete. So something to investigate and we, we should either um, make a fire and forget integration or we should, um, Sort of think think of a way to optimize this or monitor the service to make sure, you know, if if there's anything uh, happening with the service, we know about it instead of uh, you know giving user a bad experience. So something to create a card. Um, this profiler report. Let's investigate the the next one. Um, focus for the advisors with ticket get. Let's see what's there. Okay, again, interaction with services and queues and then database usage. Let's click, click on database usage and see what's going on here. So we we'll see there are, what, 1.5, 7K requests going on. Um, that's a lot of SQL requests. Um, okay. So a lot of SQL statements, sorry, um, but Again, this this SQL statement is taking three seconds to complete. So, any sort of procedure is taking more than one second. Something you know it could be alarm. Uh, we sort of need to look into this procedure with the parameters uh, of of you know the the input of the procedure and see whether we can optimize it and or see why it's taking three seconds to execute. In order to get the parameter of the procedure, you can sort of get the parameters from here. From the API endpoints, you, you get all the parameters from here, and then you can sort of replay it in your API code logic to get the uh, you know uh, um, 
the parameters to stop procedure. The only thing missing here is the user token. So sometimes with the parameters, you can't really, you know, uh, reverse engineer the, the user ID. So, um, I don't know whether this is a corporate request. So you might need to use a corporate user to try to duplicate this sort of procedure and see why it's slow. But that's definitely something, again, another ticket to, to create and worth looking into. Inter interaction with uh, services and queues. Again, it takes a long time and, uh, the, the one takes a long time at Zendesk. Uh, we sort of need to find out why it's taking sort of six seconds to complete that request to Zendesk. We can click in, into it to find out more. Um, that JSON request, search.json. So we're actually searching for some ticket or something, um, and averaging, averaging seven calls per request. So we're actually calling the, the endpoint seven times for some reason. Again, uh, something to look at and something to optimize. Uh, another ticket to be created. Oops. So last 30 minutes has just reduced the um, number of fuel paths. But anyway, let's, uh, we have investigated that, investigated that. Uh, okay, so dashboard, this is a new one. Let's look into that. So database usage, 100% almost. So we're only calling two stored procedures, or actually two twice, I'm not sure why there is a two, but here is the statement. Um, and uh, invocations is one. So this stored procedure is taking 13.1 seconds to complete. I have seen this a couple of times actually. So this is definitely a stored procedure to be opt optimized, or at least we need to find out why it's taking that long. Uh, so yeah, something uh, we need to create another card to analyze this. So you know, just by analyzing the last 30 minutes, we sort of create four, three to four different cards that we need to uh, investigate and optimize in my CRM. So that's why you can see Dynatrace is a really powerful tool. So, uh, if we skip that, uh, previous, um, spike time, which is 215, uh, as I remember, let's skip that and go to the, uh, the next 30 minutes. And then we can see there are not a lot of requests with high response time. So, uh, we do want to, go Again, go into each each of them and view the response time hotspot. See if there's anything. Yeah, here we database usage again. You know, 28 seconds. Uh, we we click into the database and see what procedure is called. Where is that? Huh. Failed connect. Ah, that's interesting. Okay, so we are still calling the old database, which is family documents archive one. Uh, I remember all the documents are uh, actually moved from this document database to S3, but we are actually still calling it. Um, and it's failing connection, of course, because the server is already off. So we need to know why it's still calling it. So, you know, that's something again, to investigate, to create a card and try to, we sort of need to duplicate this, uh, this uh, endpoint and you know, check, checking database, maybe in UAT and see why there isn't a document key. And if there isn't a document key, uh, what does that mean? You know, there's no file on X-ray. Do we need to do something about it? Or, you know, if, if it doesn't exist in old document database because we didn't move it to X-ray, then something, you know, to investigate that this triggers a discussion with JIS, with me, uh, to find out why, uh, this is happening. Instead of calling the old database, we should sort of alert the user the document doesn't exist anymore. So we sort of need to um, find out why. But looking at the ID, it's a really high number. That means it's probably a newly up, up, uploaded document. Why is calling the old document database, which is supposed to be used only for documents older than four years? So that's another question to ask. So, you know, definitely worth investigating. Maybe there's some logic problem with our uploading uh, document uh, process. That's why there's no document key recorded. And when user ask for this document, you know, it's, it's doing something really weird here. Some logic to optimize. The things I can think of, one, investigate why there's no document key, and two, investigate if there's no document key, what should we do? Should we error out? Should we report to user something or should we you know, do something about it instead of calling the old document database that we know doesn't exist anymore. So, you know, this 
these things, you know, you can you can keep investigating each request until you created all the card. And if you order by name, you see a, a good pattern. Some request is always taking very long, and you you sort of see most of the time it's database usage, and uh, you know you sort of need to duplicate the stored procedure and, and sort of op- op- optimize that. You know, it's taking ten seconds and it's not only happening to one endpoint, it's happening to a few of those endpoints. So yeah, you, you sort of need to then, uh, you know, it takes priority then because it happens multiple times to multiple users. Um, you really need to optimize that. Okay, cool. Uh, that's supposed to be the end of this session. Just, you know, um, let you guys know how do I normally, you know, start my day by investigating Dynatrace and then we find, you know, plenty, I wouldn't say plenty, but some, Issues in my CRM application, and then we supposed to be someone you know investing the team. This supposed to be start to talk to different per- people and start to create Jira card, and then talk to product owners who to assign this Jira card for because those are actually application or user problems that users are facing. It's not fake problems, right? They are they are actually requests that are taking very long to to respond for service to respond. So we need to fix them uh, and. Which team to fix it, we can always discuss. Cool. Hopefully that helps you guys to understand Dynatrace more. I'll create more videos about other stuff later. Thanks, guys.